Here are two half bodies, a medium body on the left and a full depth body on the right. An important feature of this hive design is that the hive bodies interlock, as you can see here. We've partially dismantled the two hive bodies so you can see the cross section and how the two hard plastic edges interlock. The plastic queen excluder, which comes in both white and brown colours, could not be easier to use. It simply rests on the top of the hive body. The next hive body simply rests on top of the queen excluder, but the design does still ensure that the components are interlocked and cannot slide apart. You can't fit the roof directly onto the hive body, but we strongly recommend you use either a plastic sheet or one of our purpose-made inner plastic covers. These come covered with a blue protective film which you should remove before using. These clear plastic covers give you a good opportunity to see the bees without actually allowing them to escape. It's effectively the same as a glass quilt. And that's it. A modern 21st century beehive. There is one other important hive component we haven't seen yet and that's this, the 10 litre full width rapid feeder. The bees climb up this walkway and down the dam where they can access the syrup which is held in the main part of the feeder. There are two marks for 5 and 10 litres and there's an inner plastic cover which ensures that the bees do not escape when you remove the roof. You may be able to see how it works better in this close-up. The bees climb up through here, over the dam and then down just to this point where they're using their tongues they can lick up the syrup which is held here. The inner cover ensures that the bees do not fly into the syrup where they will be drowned. The inner plastic cover does not reach the bottom of the tank but stops just short where there is a narrow gap which allows the syrup to flow through but the gap is too low to allow the bees to escape. The hive strap is easy to use. Thread it underneath the floor, pass it over the top of the hive and then open up the cam buckle and slide it in. Ensure the strap is not twisted. We have found the hive strap easiest to use if the long end is passed over the roof of the hive and then meets the buckle coming up from the floor. Press down with the thumb here, pull on the loose end and tighten the strap. Excessive force is not required the hive strap just needs to be tight enough so that if the hive were to fall over it would all hold together. The loose end can be coiled and tucked behind the strap in one of the handles. Here's a close-up of how the cam buckle works. The buckle is open with the thumb and the end of the strap simply passed through. The loose end of the strap is coiled up round the hand and then tucked into one of the handle grooves. It will stay there securely. Having assembled the hive dry, we've now disassembled it and we're going to reassemble it using a waterproof PVA adhesive. The adhesive is used sparingly on the tips of the tenons. it's also applied to the mating faces. Again, the adhesive is used sparingly. Do not put too much on, otherwise it will simply squidge out. And as mentioned earlier, do not apply any glue to the long side, as you do risk a hydraulic lock if glue gets into the mortise holes. This will prevent you pushing the hive together. Take care to ensure everything is correctly aligned and the right way up, because it is possible to fit the short sides the wrong way. 
and then as with the dry assembly we simply push them together. And as before when the two short sides have been glued to the long side the assembly is pushed onto the fourth and the final part. Excess adhesive can be removed with a damp cloth. After the hive bodies have been assembled, the next stage is painting, and we recommend two coats of an acrylic masonry paint for coating the hive. The floor and the roof need to be painted all over, both the top and the bottom. Whilst a half inch brush is best for the floor, you will probably find that a 4 inch fleece roller is best for large flat surfaces such as the roof but you will still need the brush to get into the little fiddly bits in the corners. Whilst two coats is sufficient for the rest of the hive, for the interior of the feeder a minimum of four coats is essential. The feeder should be fully painted, although the walkway that the bees come up through is not necessary to be painted. We've also painted the top edges of the feeder here. This is not essential, you only really need to do the inside. If you do paint the top edges of the feeder, you will have to rub Vaseline on them after it is dry to ensure that they do not stick to the roof. Between each coat, we recommend that you turn the feeder upside down to dry. This will ensure that the paint drains away from the groove into which the inner cover sits. Although not essential, you will make a neater job if you use masking tape to cover the hard plastic edges. A scalpel is the ideal tool to trim them flush. After it has been fully painted, the Varroa mesh should be fitted. The mesh is secured with four stainless steel screws, one placed in each corner of the mesh. The screws should be gently tightened and fitted as close to the corner as is possible. Like this.